Alfredo Dicker Brandes was an Austrian artist born on July 30th, 1898, and murdered by the Nazis in Auschwitz on October 9th, 1944. A collection of art was left behind by Brandes in two separate suitcases to Raja and Glanderova before she volunteered to be transported to Auschwitz to join her husband. Pavel Brandes, her husband, survived the Holocaust. These suitcases contained about 4,500 paintings by students, which most of the authors of the paintings perished in the Holocaust. Some of her work survived in German school of art Bauhaus, where she studied until 1923. After Bauhaus, before and during World War II, she was a teacher of art where she hoped to rouse the desire towards creative work. She helped organize and taught secret classes of art to the children of Terezin after she was deported before joining her husband in Auschwitz. The painting I chose to talk about was her light-dark contrast study for Johannes Itten's preliminary course by Friedel Dicker, made in 1919. This painting shows her presentation of light and dark contrast between four orbs, one being a silver orb greatly illuminated thanks to another white orb over it on the side, with another orb shaded black with the same proportions of the bright white orb contradicting it, it creates a counterpoint between the two. Textures are present, giving the painting a feel of physicality, and although the painting instructions are meant for light and dark contrast, there are various colors involved that give opposition to one another. But the orbs aren't the only subject at play. The background is drowned with various shades of gray allowing the orbs to pop, some above the painting and others below, creating a three-dimensional feel. My understanding of the painting without connecting Friedel's program in Bauhaus would be the various forms of contradiction in oneself, or many opposites trying to win over for our greater understanding of oneself. Maybe the bright disc is our guidance to a better person against the many obvious faults of our own making, or at least the ones that we know and see, such as the three other dark orbs in the painting. In terms of cultural significance, Friedel's program was concerned in the detachment of the violent world that was thanks to the Great War and the Russian Revolution. A rise against such violent takeovers for a better tomorrow and the creation of a utopian world. So among the many negatives surrounding her society at the time, a lighter world would find itself and be learned to win against all darker energy from that time. Knowing the background of the author of the painting can truly bring an inspiration of hope and the work to bring about the betterment of mankind through expression and thoughtful emotional response to those around us. This contrast study alone makes me believe the light in a scary world and it's up to us to rise from this black sheet and spread our light to others. Pablo Picasso was born in a poor family in Spain in 1881 and died in France in 1973. Picasso was a prodigy of sorts due to his naturalistic art style produced at an early age thanks to the lessons from his art teaching father. Picasso quickly gained critical attention in his early 20s after moving to France to explore more art and surround himself with like-minded individuals. His early professional work started off with heavy blue tones in many of his paintings. Many know it as his blue period. This period gave a window to Picasso's life to his fan base of a depressing period in his life. In contrast to his later life, he began painting in warmer colors in his many portraits of women that had relationships with him. This pitted him into his rose period. His later stylistic periods include Cubism, Neoclassicism, and surrealism. I chose to talk about The Weeping Woman by Pablo Picasso due to its unique representation of himself. Despite his famous work in his various stylistic periods, from time to time he would paint something not in the grand scheme of things, but paint for something for the individual. From the lines to the contrast of color, everything about the painting is harsh. From the bright colors of her clothes and hair, versus the black background and the, white and the whiteness of her face makes the painting unsettling. The purple added for her blush tones also add a sickening emotion to the weeping lady. The green also gives off a toxic look that complements the sickening feel of her purple blush tones. The lines here give a sense of verticality. Everything is sharp, and even the strokes of white and the black background give an uneasy and very noisy feeling almost as if there was a buzzing of annoyance and anguish. 
The distorted representation of the woman is also made specifically to give an uncomfortable and disturbing feeling, perhaps a representation of how one feels in that state from the inside. The way I understand this image is a person in pain in public without the understanding of the people around said person, almost as if she came under the realization of someone's death and collapsing in anguish while people around her just stare in confusion and slight discomfort. The whipping woman is supposed to represent anguish and pain. From the colors to the way the lines are drawn, everything about the painting is harsh and uncomfortable. It even reminds me of some days where I felt exactly that, a temporary end of the world moment alongside a very ugly cry.